uh, Michael's asking, how did Weather Tartans come about? And there's also, I, I missed who, who asked this question, um, when choosing a tartan, which do you choose? Do you choose the modern, the ancient? How do you go about choosing which one of those? Sure. Yes. Exactly. The um, Weather Tartans came about in the, I believe it was the 1950s. Um, there was a mill over in Scotland called DC Dogleash. And the, the story, and I'll use that term, story, goes that uh, Kenny Dogleash's father, who was the, the owner of the mill at the time, um, was given a scrap of tartan that was found in a bog, <coughs> and he has, you know, he kept it under lock and key and historically uh, reproduced the actual colors that were in the tartan, and the, the blues turned to gray and the greens turned to brown um, to weather the tartan. They actually coined the term reproduction. Um, when pressed about this by the Scottish Tartan Society, uh, they basically said, well, we don't have that scrap anymore, and we kept it under lock and key, but it's not here. We gave it back to the owner. Um, hmm. So it's, it's really a question of, was the story BS or was it true? It's kind of immaterial at this point because yeah. they're a thing now. At, at this point, yeah. So <clears throat> Dog Leash copyrighted the name Reproduction as it goes, you know, as far as tartans, um, to look like they were just effectively pulled from a bog or old, old, old looking tartans. Um, when they started to become more popular, the the other mills couldn't use the word reproduction, so they started using the term weathered. And then also the term muted kind of came in, uh, was invented by House of Edgar, I believe, uh, to slightly differentiate their color palette from the weathered color palette. Instead of greens, excuse me, instead of grays and uh, and browns, House of Edgar was using an olive green and a uh, like a, a stormy sky blue and blood red kind of colors. Mm -hmm. um, which of those do you pick? Whatever one you want. The Basically, think about it as far as a, a pure capitalism standpoint. If the mill has one Buchanan tartan, then you get one to pick from. And if there's a couple different mills, you can choose from whichever mill you want, but they're all gonna look effectively the same. So one mill at some point in history had the idea of, okay, well, if people don't like the Buchanan modern, let's make Buchanan ancient where we lighten the colors up, mm. or let's make Buchanan weathered where we turn the colors to browns and grays and that kind of thing. So they're giving a Buchanan who walks into the shop three options versus one option. So that's kind of how the different color palettes came to be. It was very much just to give consumers choice and have more bites at the apple. Mm -hmm. um, which one you should choose for formal versus day wear, honestly, it doesn't matter. Um, I got married in the Scott Green Weathered Tartan. Just because it's browns and grays doesn't mean that it's less formal than the Scott Green Modern Tartan, which is, right. you know, bold green or like a bottle green and a navy blue and that kind of thing. It all boils down to, for an outfit, for how formal or, or casual it is, what you're pairing it with. If I have on a dress sporin and a Prince Charlie or, or a black argyle jacket and a bow tie and that kind of thing, then it's formal. If I wear a weathered tartan with a day sporin, a pair of sneakers and a polo shirt, then it's casual. It's really, when it comes to kilts, it's really about all the accessories, not actually the kilt itself. The kilt is the most versatile garment that I can think of, where you can dress it up or down. It's not like a pair of cargo shorts or dress pants, it's both. You can dress it however you want, depending on the accessories you choose. Cargo dress pants. <laughs> I just threw up in my mouth. That's cargo <laughs> dress pants. Um, yeah, I think you summed it up very well. Now, I what I, I the, one, the only comment I'll make is um, uh, the Outlander tartans are weathered, technically, right? Yes. So what's ironic is the fact that the whole idea of the uh, reproduction weathered tartans is a modern invention. It's basically it goes back to you said the fifties. I believe at, yes. at the latest. Um, if you go back, if you went actually back to the eighteenth century and you were wandering around with Jamie Fraser, like a a real Jamie Fraser, minus the cavalry boots. Um, he would not be wearing this weathered drab tartan. The colors were a lot brighter. They're a lot more vivid, you know, and, and that was one of the ways you showed pride and uh, just enjoyed life, frankly, and showed wealth. You know, basically, you know, the, the bright colors were signifier of 
you know, being able to afford the dyes to weave a nice uh, bright colored cloth. So this whole weathered is old thing is just like in the movies where you see a medieval movie and they assume, hey, it's the Middle Ages, so everything was drab and muddy and, and ugly and all that, and Max over here laughing. Um, because they don't, you know, that's just a modern assumption. Um, so it's, it's, from a modern standpoint, this modern invention of weather tartans is a nice way to have a good sedate and naturalistic look. Um, if you want to be really historical and traditional, you might want to consider the modern or the, uh, ancient, uh, palette instead. I will point something out, though. Okay. The, will the, all the mills, La Caron, Strathmore, House of Edgar, um, Dog Leash, all the mills are less old. Let's say I'm, I agree. I'm not sure exactly how old they are. I think I know where you're say, going. But let's okay. say let's say 1900s. Um, the mill that was in existence, the do main you mean, do mill. You mean 1800s when you say 1900s? No, I mean like 1900s. Like 20th century. Correct. Okay. Go ahead. Um, they're not you know hundreds of years old. Lock right. Heron and them are you know they're they're older than 50 years, but they're not like 500 years. Gotcha. Old. Um, <clears throat> the oldest mill. Oh, I shouldn't say the oldest mill. One of the the main mill that was weaving tartans in the 1800s was Wilson's Bannockburn. Certainly the most famous. Yes. yes. And Wilson's, their color palette, they didn't have modern and ancient and whatever. They just had their colors. Um, mm -hmm. And the green, the their, the Wilson's of Bannockburn colors, there's a couple mills that do reproduction, not, you know, forget the term weathered for a second. They did reproduction of Wilson's colors. Uh -huh. Strathmore does it. Um, you have a kilt. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Um, that's a Strathmore kilt. Yep. Um, or a Strathmore material. The basically, it's they used navy blue, mm -hmm. scarlet red, so a bold red. Yep. But for green, they always used olive green. Mm -hmm. So in in today's terms, it's kind of a mix of uh, muted and modern together. Mm -hmm. um, but that was just what they did. That was the green color that they chose, and they said that looks good. That's what we're doing. Sure. It's keep in mind a, a tartan is defined by the thread count. So. If you and the thread count does not say, you know, Pantone number eight, eight six two seven three Z, color green. It says green. It says blue. It says black. It says red. So, if you're going to when you go to a mill, it's their interpretation of what green means. Mm -hmm. It's no, there's no. It must be this exact thing unless it's specified or unless it's a branding exercise. Um, right. But it is. Green is green as far as the, the tartan registry is concerned. So the, the, the specific colors of green are really up to the mill and what they find is commercially viable. And in the case of Wilson's, their green was a muted olive kind of green. Mm -hmm. I just want to make the point that Jamie Frazier would not have looked oh, like he was covered in mud. Agree. He'd be, he would have been brighter colors. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't trying to dispute that. Mm -hmm. I was just going back to the, the muted modern to make that point. Mm -hmm. yeah.